what's going on, y'all? T-Bob here. And Jake as well. And you're about to watch a little OTB LSU. We're going to give you all the latest, greatest between LSU football, baseball, women's basketball, softball, and everything in between. Bottom line, if you want to talk Tigers, keep it locked, subscribe, like it, and uh, we hope you enjoy the LSU football news, though, Jake. Uh, Caden Durham, remember, it was uh, two guys, Colin Simmons and Caden Durham, going to um, commit yesterday. Uh, we were asking you yesterday, actually, you know, you think they go 0 for 2, 2 for 2, 1 for 2, you said 1 for 2, and well, lo and behold, that's exactly what you get as you luge five-star edge rusher to Texas. Now, he's from Duncanville, Texas, but uh, the Longhorns ended up winning that with LSU coming in second place, but uh, top 100 running back Caden Durham uh, ends up committing to the Tigers. This is a guy who's the 95th prospect in the country. I think that's Maybe LSU's second top 100 recruit now. Taylor, you might know better than I would. Um, but a 95th prospect, according to 247 Composite, Jake. Uh, it's a cat who rushed for, like, this is pretty crazy. He rushed for nearly 2,000 yards. And he had 36 touchdowns on just 210 carries. And I watched his highlight tape, and it makes sense because uh, the dude is a is a track. I mean, he can fly. He runs a 10 to 500 meter, and his entire highlight tape is just him being, like, you know, multiple miles per hour faster than every other high school kid on the field. So it just filled a 60, 70, 50 yard touchdown run. So a, uh, a big get here for LSU getting the 95th. They think he's like the ninth best running back in the country or something. Yeah. He's top and, 10 uh, for sure. Caden Durham. Yeah. And I always hate when you ever, you have two guys that are committing at the same time, because if you don't get both of them, then you feel like you're disappointed and you listen to the fan base and they wanted both these players. You didn't get both, but you did get one. And you got a really good player, a player that's going to help you. He has all the skills to play in the SEC and be a difference maker in the SEC. Like you said, T, he is a top 100 player. Now, you missed out on a top five player. You understand that. But there's still players at that position that you're going to have an opportunity to get. Dominic McKinley is somebody that within your state plays the same position. And the two schools that he's kind of come down to are Texas and LSU. Huh. So would this maybe change his mind about Texas? He is in Lafayette, so you think that you've got a pretty good chance of at least getting to the finish line with a chance to cross the finish line there. So you still have a chance to get an edge rusher. We talked about this, I think it was last week, late in the week, we talked about these these two players, these two edge rushers. So you go out there, you get a top 10 running back, and you still have the opportunity to add a special guy there on the edge. And so... Don't look at this like LSU missed out on a guy. They went and got a guy. It so happens to be from the same high school. It's a really good player, and looks like he could help LSU pretty quickly. Um. So, look, I, you know, I, I don't really care as much about individual recruits, but good on him. He's got an exciting tape. It's cool. Uh, it's a good recruit, right? LSU now up to the 11th class in the country, uh, fifth in the SEC, uh, which, again, just shows you how ridiculous the SEC is. Um, but uh, this is where I think it gets actually interesting for radio and for conversation. And this is a tweet from a guy, Max Toscano. And I'm not 1,000% sure, Jake, but I think this cat used to write for Valley Shook when he was young. Um, I think he joined Jim Morris' staff as like a GA maybe or something. And so he's been up at UConn, you know, learning from Jim Mora yeah. Jr., learning the game and everything. Um, but he's still a massive LSU guy, and he tweets this yesterday, and a lot of people are very angry with him about what he says here, but, you know, kind of sent my take, you know, my 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 take alarm bells ringing, and I was like, wait a second, is, but people are angry, but, like, is he wrong? Uh, let's talk about it. He says, quote, Max says, uh, it's very interesting that LSU, between Angel Reese and Libby Dunn, Dylan Cruz, and Paul Skeens, is the most abuzz, visible, marketable, athletic brand in the country and the school's flagship program, football, has seen zero boost in recruiting from it, way behind Jay Johnson and Kim Mulkey. Now, here's the thing to highlight. I think when you initially read that, there is a, uh, a, 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 a reaction that wants to make you defensive because you believe in Brian Kelly. He had an incredible year one. He's a very good coach, and he seems to have everything operating on a very high plane right now at LSU. And recruiting's not awful. They're 11th in the country, right? They're up to sixth on on three. Okay, there you go. Sixth on on three. Um, but then, but 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 when you think about it objectively, 
he is way behind Jay Johnson and Kim Mulkey. I mean, they both signed number one class in the country and won national championships. And you are not recruiting at the level that you did, you know, just technically, if you just look at pure rankings under Les Miles and Ed Ogeron. So, so like, again, you can be defensive about it, and I think Brian Kelly's the guy. Like, if you listen to the show, you know how much I love Brian Kelly, but uh, I, I guess there's actually, I don't see that much of a lie in the take. Well, I disagree with it. Okay, why? Um, because recruiting in football is completely different now. You have a top six class. It's not like you're 17th or 18, so you're still doing what you have to do. You've dominated Louisiana, which is always priority number one. Dominate Louisiana. Now, star chasing, that's for somebody else. It's not for me. You have a goal every single year as the LSU football coach to go out there, put a fence around the state, and so far they have done that. That is true. Okay, so that's goal number one. And also now the transfer portal has to play into this. And your starting quarterback, who is the first team all SEC quarterback, is a what? He's a transfer. Yeah. You've gone out there and you've got Omar Spates, all Pac 12 linebacker, who is a transfer. So you're doing the things that you have to do. It might not be in high school recruiting where you're number one or two or three in the country. Hey, Florida's number four in the country. You want to change places with where they're at as a program to where you're at as a program, right? Recruiting is a big portion of it. It is not to say all be all. And that's just the way I've always felt about it. You have to do the things that you set out to do and the things that LSU always sets out to do in recruiting is dominate Louisiana. And they have done that so far and there still might be more to come. If you go get a five-star edge rusher from Louisiana, this class goes from six probably to, well, it might I, I go don't up think to we, four. I don't think we can call it six right now because you can't take like just the highest and then ignore the lowest. Like I, that's why I always just stick with the two, four, seven composite, but it doesn't really matter if you're, if you're six, you're 10, like six and 10. What's, what's the difference there? It's, it's, like, what you're saying is if you get an edge rusher, you can be a top five class. Yeah, and, I mean, LSU's not falling behind in, in anything right now. They might not have the NIL deals that Angel Reese and Libby Dunn and, and some of the other crews and schemes have right now, but they still have primetime players. So it's not like they don't have guys that are, are first-team all-conference type players. And another thing, their best players on this football team are what? Linemen. Yes, he has, he's done a very good job of rebuilding the line. So that is, no that offense is to the line, point. they're not going to get and LSU as much doesn't normally have good lines as some of the other, as your starting center field, as your number one pitcher, as your top scorer, right, in basketball. True. So you've got Mason Smith, who's a defensive tackle. Yep. you got Will Campbell, who's a left tackle. Like, those positions are – Makai Wingo, you're All-American, is another defensive tackle. So yep. a lot of different factors play into this. But I would argue with whoever Max is that Harold Perkins is, is – pretty close to with a special year with what he did last year to being in that same group that he listed out here at the beginning as well. Uh, with Angel Reese, Levy Dunn, Dylan Cruz, and Paul yes. Skeens. Yeah, yeah. You can't talk to anybody true. who covers the SEC or college football. doesn't matter who I talk to, best defensive player in the country or most game-changing player in the country, he's always the first name out. It is, it is interesting because at the core of the take here is that, there's, that football's seen zero boost in recruiting. And again, like, we've, we've seen – football recruiting, you know, very, very well. So maybe like a boost in recruiting is unrealistic because LSU is not going to be number one in the country, but it's, it's, you know, they, they are behind. And I know you don't care about stars, but for people that do, they are behind. Like you can go back to every class to five of LSU that's been successful as far as a team. And you look at how that team is built It is built through dominating Louisiana. It's not getting number one classes. It's not getting number two classes. It's, Finishing within the top eight of recruiting mm -hmm. and dominating Louisiana. Yeah, um, I think I think there is an element though in football that two four seven is also up to number seven according to Chris H in the Bayou Four chat. Okay, there you go. Just give me the composite. Just give me the two four seven composite. That that that, that that's what I would want to see. Um, I think the. I wonder, and and do you think you're that guy in football in the same way? that you are in baseball and that you are with Kim Mulkey. Like, I'm not going to say that you were that guy in women's basketball pre-Kim Mulkey, but wherever Kim Mulkey goes, you immediately, I mean, you know that video where the guy's like, you're not that guy. Uh, wherever Kim Mulkey goes, you become that guy. Do you think you're there in football? Because I, mean, I, I kind of think that it's... LSU baseball, though, they, they've kind of always been out in front. No, that's what I mean. That's what, that's what I'm I, saying. Yeah. No, no, I'm saying that baseball has... Kim Mulkey makes you that in basketball immediately because how badass she is. I'm saying I think uh, be, because LSU football, while it has the moments, 
at an unparalleled that nobody else has, like in terms of the highs, like nobody's, you know, won all the natties with three coaches were all that that we all know about. There's just enough inconsistency where you don't get treated the same like like Alabama football's like LSU baseball, right? And and now Georgia just through the sheer brute force of winning two natties in a row. But like Ohio State gets a bit of a doubt where maybe arguably they shouldn't. But they do. And and I don't I don't think they should. But like, is it is it a deal where in football you won't get that kind of Nick Saban, Alabama, Kirby Smart, Georgia believe uh, until Brian Kelly wins a natty? I mean, probably. And like you said, I, I think you have to be a little bit more consistent. The lows can't be as low yeah. if you want to be in that top three. Yeah. Because LSU's still won more national championships than Georgia in the last 20 years. Yeah. And I mean, and Ohio State just won back-to-back. Ohio State's State won, won two. One, yeah, they won. Or they, they, they won, won one two. in the early 2000s. Oh, that's right, that's right. And Maurice then they Claret. won one in 14. Yeah. And LSU still has more than them. So, yeah, I mean, you actually, outside of Alabama, you have the most hardware in the trophy cabinet. But I think what you're talking about, T, is probably right. You want to be more consistent. Like, when you're low, you want to be maybe 11th in the country. Yeah. And and not be in a situation like they were for two years. Now, outside of those two years, there hasn't been a ton of lows. But, like, even going back to, gosh, like 2014, 2015, teams that had high expectations oh. and you lose games that you shouldn't lose – and you finish the season eight and four with a bowl win, nine and four, didn't feel great. Like that's the season that I think you want your low season to be at. Uh, they were 10 and three. They were 10 and three and, and had a chance to maybe get to the SEC championship game. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, I mean, no, if, if your low season is 10 wins, that's, you know, that, that's, that's exact. But that, that is a place for. where LSU, I think, can get. So, to your point here, Jake, actually, I, I take it back because it does, on the composite, so looking at all of them, LSU's up to seventh, and that's with 23 commits, which, you know, is more than some, less than others. And so, yeah, if you add, like, a couple big more games, you're, you're a top five class. And, and really, to me, that is the metric that I think, I don't care about being number one overall um, and really top ten. Like, I'm not going to ever, you'll never hear, hear me sit here and complain about being, like, top ten. Because I think if you're going top 10, covering Louisiana, like Jake said, you're doing enough to probably set yourself up to win a championship. But if you're consistently finishing that top five, I think that's how you start to set yourself up to avoid any of those bad years. And uh, with 23 commits, LSU is, yeah, they're right there. I mean, they're, they're, they're right on the edge of breaking into that top five for sure. But it's just kind of interesting to, to, to think about that program compared to, you know, what baseball and basketball have done, which is inevitable. I mean, they're all second-year coaches. That took over, you know, varying degrees of struggling programs and 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 immediately turned them around. Yeah, I'd like to go back and see maybe some of the years that we're talking about where you didn't have your best year, what the recruiting class was the year before, and try to correlate that to see what it actually says about the on the field success or lack of success, depending on what you're looking for. Well, it gets you know it gets dense. It's like Les Miles always had top five classes, but then he had the thing where they like didn't sign a linebacker for two years. And so the team like really struggled because of it. So it's one of those deals where it's not a, it, you're right. It's not an end all be all, right? You still got to positionally recruit. Um, it's it, roster management is a thing. Like it's not, it's not just that you do top five and you're going to be good. If you don't, you're not. So I, 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 I see what you're, what you're getting at there for sure. But um, so in the top 10, 10 guys in Louisiana, top 10 players, and I'm, I'm looking at on three. I don't, you, you can look at 247. I don't know how much different it would be or, or rivals, if that's rival still. No, rivals yeah. Still for, there, for, right? Look, the only thing I care about the composite for is, uh, like, team rankings, player rankings, whatever. If you're some of the best players in Louisiana, you can go anywhere. This says top ten players. You have eight of them committed to you. Yeah. And the other two, you have one that is a heavy lean and one that is 50-50 between you and Texas. I mean, that's that's you. If you I don't think I've ever seen that before. If you get all the top ten players, have you ever seen that? It, it might have happened, but I don't remember. I and mean, you got number 13, you got number 15 in the state, you got number 20 in the state, you got number 25 in the state as well. So not the only players, uh, 33rd in the state. Shelly really enjoying being able to drive to recruit. <laughs> like, I mean, he's just over the moon. He doesn't even want to go anywhere else. I mean, even to the transfer portal, it's all he's doing is going to get, get Louisiana kids. I mean, uh, Taylor, you were talking about and Andre Sam. Is he Louisiana originally, right? Yeah. 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 You were talking about Andre Sam at practice yesterday flashing, right? Yeah, he looked really good. So, you know, Greg Brooks is dealing with that little nagging injury. Yeah. He did like the individual drills, but when they did like seven on seven, eleven on eleven, he wasn't out there. 
Sam was the other safety with Major Burns. He looked really good, really big. Damn. Um, so, uh, yeah, so Kelly, he told no lie. You know, he told you when he got this job, they were going to embrace Louisiana. And maybe that's his biggest win is that the whole idea of could Brian Kelly recruit Louisiana is been shattered. Wow, Jake, what incredible takes. I mean, those guys, they're just the best. Uh, I think so. And if you think so, again, hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications when we post every single day here on OTB LSU.